Hey everybody, today we're looking at the eMeet Streamcam 1. It's a wireless camera that can be grouped up for multicam situations, so that's why eMeet sent me two. In the box, you get the eMeet Streamcam 1, a carrying case, a wireless microphone, a windscreen for the mic, a USB-C to USB-C cable with a USB-C to USB-A adapter, the documentation, and some stickers. So this is the camera here. It's a nice build. It's a 1 2.8 inch Sony sensor. On the front, other than the lens itself, there's an LED indicator just over the eMeet symbol that'll let you know whether or not the camera is on or what it's doing. And then across the bottom, you'll see the microphone that'll also be lit up if it's active. On the bottom, you got a quarter inch thread for tripod mounting. On the back, you've got a lot of IO, but you also have some good information here. On the left, you have a micro SD card slot. In the middle, you have a jack for a wired microphone. So if you have a lab and you just happen to be walking around with this one camera, that's a good solution for you. And then on the right, you have a USB-C port for charging and data transfer. On the top, you've got the power button. And just underneath the power button, you're going to see eMeet1 with a number. That entire thing is actually the name of this microphone. And that's going to be what you're looking for when you're connecting this to different devices. Lastly, on top of the Streamcam 1, you have your wireless microphone you just attach it it's charging when it's attached and you see it's got a little clip there so you can clip it to yourself or just hold it while you're walking around and talking but before we dig deeper into that i want to talk about the sponsor of this video magtame magtame is the maker of those usb cables that coil up using magnets they come in a couple different styles this is a c style cord that curls around inside of itself and this is the o style cord that coils up on top of itself they're nice length cables both of these are 1.5 meters it's about four and a half feet and they uncoil and coil back up really easily so you can see how i'm uncoiled right now now and voila and the magnets are strong so it'll stay together it does not fall apart in your bag or anything like that the nice thing about them too is you can keep them coiled up and only use the length of cable that you actually need to reach your device and that helps keep your setup nice and clean and the magnets are powerful enough not just so they can stick the cable to itself but you could stick this thing to anything so it really opens up a lot of options as far as storing it away for a moment and the cables aren't just good for storage this USB-C to USB-C O style cable is a 240 watt cable with 3a fast charging and data transfer go to the website to look for yourself you'll see my link below. Also use my code for another 10% off your purchase. Now let's get back to the video. So this is the eMeet Stream Windows app and you can see that I already have the cameras connected. You'll also notice that there's a bit of a delay. You're not going to have to worry about any sync issues if you're recording on this app or if you're recording on the phone app which we'll look at later. And that's because all the audio capturing is being done on the camera itself so you're not going to have to worry about it. Now if we look at the app itself you can see I can switch between the cameras just by clicking on them and you'll see a little bit of a delay when I do that. Timing those cuts might be your biggest challenge and then on each camera you can select all the options so from here you can turn on HDR you can change your anti-flicker you can do an image flip you can manage your exposure metering so in this case we're just going to do a center exposure you do image mirroring and you could take your camera mode you can do an auto mode so it takes all this manual stuff away or you can stay in the manual mode and actually adjust all this stuff yourself now if you're noticing these really convoluted titles of all these different buttons this only seems to apply to the Windows app if you go on the phone app it's not like this at all it's a very clunky version of the Windows app your next option, you can go to some other different camera options so you can see how you're connected and your battery life. You can see the name of your camera. You can format the SD card. You can set a password for each individual camera so that people can't access it. Probably a good idea. Gives you some actions if you hit the power button. You could turn on or off or set the brightness to all of the LEDs on the camera. Your next option here actually has a live direct for each of your cameras. You could send each of these cameras to different locations. If you click on that, it actually gives you an option to all the different live platforms you can send this to. And and then if you go to your camera, you can see it's capturing the levels for both of your cameras. And this is the overall mix. You can go into each individual camera to settings and then set what microphone you want to use. So you can use the internal mic, you can use a wireless microphone, or you can use a corded microphone. Over here, you have your crop mode. So this is where you would set your AI tracking and things like that. On the bottom, you see center track, center scale. So now we have a scaled version. And as I move around, you'll see that the camera moves with me and that frame gives you an idea of what's actually happening. And if you zoom in even more from down here, it'll continue to do the same. The features across the bottom, you have your media audio. That's just the actual physical playback of the audio as you're talking. This is where you'd access information from your SD cards that are in the physical cameras. And this is where you set up your records. So if you click on it, it actually gives you an option. So you could toggle on to directly record to the cameras if you had SD cards in there, which again, I do not. And then you could choose the quality between 1080p and 720. It's 30 frames per second, no matter what. And then you could choose to record locally in the settings. You can actually set up what directory that goes to. So now I'm connected to both cameras via the eMeet Stream 
Windows app. And it's really easy because once you've connected all of your cameras, which I don't know the actual limit, I know I've seen at least four being used, but I think you can go up to eight. Don't quote me on that though. But once they're all there, you can simply just click between them and then you can actually switch your camera like you are live directing a multi-camera show. Now it does have something called auto director and you can actually change it. It's a duration based thing. So when you go through, it'll actually switch between your cameras based on the based on the durations that you actually wanted to set up. So for example, if you're doing something where you wanna actually see a little bit of the cooking, a little bit of your face, but you don't actually have the control or your hands are full, so you can't be switching between the camera, this can do it for you. And you can actually set it to be, hey, this camera can be longer and this camera can be a little bit shorter. Now what you can also do is you can set a unified thing, which just lets you do the exact same duration for every single camera, no matter what. I really don't recommend this one though, because you don't really have a whole whole lot of control as to when these switches happen and you want to be able to do that so i would rather actually get somebody to just actually you know manually switch it for me and just you know cut out the middle robot but now what i want to do is i actually want to move around a little bit because these are wireless so let's go mobile so what we're going to do is we're going to walk around the house and test the overall stability of the signal we're going to have situations like this where we actually have like concrete between us and the computer and moving around and also the wi-fi the router's out there too so now we have several walls of steel and concrete between us and the computer and we're just trying things out and it's pretty interesting because it really opens up a lot of possibilities as far as what you want to do in a stream you could have two people walking around with these things on a show floor or something like that. You could have different things going on in different rooms of your house. It's really cool. And now we're actually running both cameras via the eMeet Stream app on my phone. You can see it right here. So if I switch between cameras live, now I'm over here and I do it again here. I actually find this one to be a lot more responsive than the Windows app. The Windows app in total was a really clunky experience. And I don't know if it's just because I'm looking at it a lot smaller. It actually appears to be a much better quality image. I don't know if it's just recording at a little bit better of a bit rate, but you have all the same options to your avail. Really easy for you to be able to switch between the cameras. Really easy for you to be able to set up any of the settings. Recording to your device, both cameras or all of the above. And streaming is a really cool one too, because you can connect to Twitch, you can connect to YouTube, you can connect to Facebook Live, no problem. You can send out to all of the multi-stream style. I do recommend though, if you are going to be doing that, if you also want to record, just record directly to the cameras. If you put too much on the phone itself, you're going to have real problems with the video quality. So these cameras cameras will run you $249.99 US a piece, and that can be a pricey proposition, so you might want to consider the use cases before you decide to go ahead with getting multiples of these. But the really cool thing is just the freedom that you get with the fact that you can put these things anywhere. You can put one up on a mount to have like a top-down camera without having the worry of extra cables drooping over you. You can have ones off to the side. You can put one up in the corner. You can have one in a completely different room. It's awesome. And while getting these for a multicam setup, say you were just doing it at your desk, would still technically be cheaper than if you did something like two different Elgato face cam pros, you still have to consider the overall quality. These cameras are just not as high quality as the face cam, even the normal face cam for that matter. Plus you get a better frame rate and all of that. So that's another thing to consider. I'd say if you need to move away from your desk or you need to take these on the go, this is a fantastic option though. But what do you think about the eMeet Stream Cam 1? Let me know down in the comments. How do you like its features? How do you like its quality? How about the audio? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to go down and hit the like and subscribe hit the bell so you know when I got new videos coming out. And until next time, let's get to work. Quick, this is Joe from the future. You have to click one of these videos or the world ends. They're both recommended for you. Just click either one right now, 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 now. Ah!